What's up, YouTube family? Welcome back to Native Sun Wood Art, and today I'm going to be making a wooden sword using only fire and these two hands. Okay, that was totally clickbaitish, but if you're still here, let me tell you what I'm actually going to be doing, which is I actually am going to be making a wooden sword using this pine. I'm going to be finishing it using only fire. Now, if you've been following my channel, you know that I love to finish wood using fire. This technique is called yakisugi or shoshugi man, and it's the Japanese technique of preserving wood using fire. Now, if you haven't seen my video on yakisugi, I'll link it at the end of the video, so you, and please go check it out. I go into much more depth and detail about it. This video will also act as a tutorial for how to make a basic wooden sword using only hand tools. So if that's something that also interests you, be sure to stick around. Now that that's done and everyone's ready to go, let's get started. Okay, now this is just a piece of 2x4 that I got from Home Depot. About two bucks. And it's got knots and holes, but it's also got some really nice big grains in here that I really like that work really well for shoshiki bomb. And, um... This technique works well on top of woods like pine, so that it'll work really well. It also helps to harden the wood and preserve it, like I said. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to measure it out. I want a bit, I want four inches from the bottom. This is going to be for my model, and this is just going to be, you know, roughing it out. With this, the length of this piece, it's going to make, um, it's going to make a pretty basic standard long sword. Not so much a, a short sword, just for the length of it. This is three feet long. So with short swords, you usually want them about two feet. The blade to not be to be between like I want to say 15 to 18 inches of length. This one, the blade will probably be like between 18, uh, between 20 and 24 inches, about two feet. So that'll be like your basic standard size long sword or broad sword, I guess you could say. But now what I'm going to do is measure out the length or width of my hand just because I want this to fit comfortably. So I'm just going to put my hand here and it, it, either or you can know, flip it around either way. And so hopefully the same size. Uh, give yourself just a little bit of extra room on either side. Lay down your ruler and then just mark where that where that's going to be. And this is going to be for my handle. And then the rest of this is going to be for the blade and also I'm going to just mark off just an inch between and I'm going to use that that space just for the guard so this is going to be for my pommel this is my handle area this is going to be for my guard and the rest of this is going to be all blade so that in the end is how it should look something like that for the length and once I trim some of this wood off, it's going to lighten up considerably and it should be fairly well balanced. As you can see, I've used my knife, my knife, my saw to cut out the profile, the space in between the pommel and the guard where my handle is going to be. <clears throat> then I just cut small slits into it. Because it's pine, I can use a, a screwdriver to go in, easily in between those pieces and then just crack them loose. And then all I'm going to do is use, I'm going to repeat the process on this other side and then use a uh, wood rasp to smooth out the inside and get these nice and flush and clean.
Now I'm going to use the rounded side of this rasp to <clears throat> make some finger grooves on either side here, just to give me a little bit better grip on the sword. And I'm also going to use the flat type to round off the edges on both sides. This, um, I recommend this if you're not finishing with fire. I'm only going to be taking this down just a little bit because during the fire, um, the finishing process, when I am burning it and torching it, it's going to take off some of these, this material and some of the, a lot of these sharp edges um, by itself in that technique. But I just want to, you know, help it along and, you know, make it as comfortable as possible for my hand before I do that. Now for this next step, you can do this a couple different ways. You can either, if you have like a table saw, you can just run this over a table saw to get the beveled edges to make the edges of the blade. Or you can use that same uh, wood rasp that you're using for the handle and just file those down at an angle to get the edges. What I'm going to be using is my handy dandy trusted Japanese plane. Uh, I use this a lot and I find it, it's very handy for just, for a specifically this task because it takes off it'll take the wood off straight <coughs> at a straight edge a nice clean cut to get the edges that I want and it just makes the job super simple and fast and this is only nine bucks so for nine bucks to be able to do this job a lot faster cleaner and the way that I want it I think it's money well spent stuck with me so far then you should have something that looks similar to this. Now this is a perfectly fine wooden sword. Again, very basic and it's exactly everything that you would need in a sword. It's got a handle, a pommel, uh, and a blade, and this kind of carved in uh, guard. And you can stop right here. You know, all you'd have to do is just give it one final sanding and then you're good to go. You can paint it, you can stain it, you can do whatever you want with it. It's perfectly fine. Wooden sword. Uh, next, what I'm going to do is take the torch to this and we're going to burn some wood. And that's going to give us a really cool uh, shine finish on this. And what's going to happen is as I'm burning it and then I brush it, I'm going to be using a uh, brass brush to brush off the material once I char it. And you'll see that in the video. It's going to kind of expose the grain. It's going to give it this very three dimensional. Um, 
geometric kind of look to it. So it'll take off all the really soft grain once it's brushed and leave only these lines and the, the really more dense grain that's on there. It's going to give it a really cool effect. And then after that's done, I'm just going to finish it off with some oil, linseed oil and then we'll be all set to go. Okay, so after you've charred, brushed, and applied your boiled linseed oil to your sword, it should look something like this. I repeated that process twice on mine to achieve a darker finish, but yours should be a little bit lighter than this, more of a reddish tint, uh, hue to it, but still, it should come out like this. I'm really happy with how this came out. This the finish has so much dimension and texture to it, and I just always like you know how things come out. You know, just the the way that the grain pops, even the knots after you've um, charred and brushed them, they kind of stick out a little bit. But again, it's just so much dimension and texture to this sword. It's not just plain, just a plain sleek sword. It has so much character to it and it just makes it so unique and each piece that you do if and when you do do this is going to be uniquely yours because no two grow or finish the same way now the finish that's on here will last you a very long time that's what the process is meant and designed to do but once it's dried for 24 hours and all the oil has um, has evaporated and soaked into it it's become nice and dry you can apply a secondary coat to this, uh, say lacquer or varnish or even shellac to this, um, or even epoxy to this to make it that much more durable. This is still made out of pine, so I wouldn't recommend it for any actual sword play or combat or bashing into things. This is pretty much strictly just a decorative piece meant for you know costume or just hanging up on a wall. But still, it's a very nice piece. Uh, even though the process does harden it, so that's going to be one of my future videos. I really want to test and see how strong that the process does make it. And I am going to be adding a, coat, a few coats of lacquer to this, just to uh, you know, make it that much more durable. So after that process, I'm curious to see how strong it, it actually makes the wood. Because uh, pine is a soft wood, but the process does make it very durable. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the music in this. It's, courtesy of Michael Allen over at Plot's Voice. The instrumental at the end is a song called Solace that was done by his band uh, Phoenix. And this is the first time ever that it's on, you know, been featured on YouTube. So I hope you guys enjoy that and I'm very honored to be uh, the one to feature it on one of my videos. And I'm, you know, big thank you again to Michael for letting me, you know, let me feature it on my video today. So, uh, 
Without further ado, that's it. Um, if you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to like, you know, subscribe for more. Be sure to leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think of this build, finish, uh, anything that I could have done better, anything that you, you think that I did wrong or maybe, maybe see you do differently. And as always, thanks for watching and take care.